Good morning. It's that time again. I got my book. I got my coffee. <clears throat> I haven't had a drink yet because it's too hot. That'll clear away any cobwebs. We drink very strong coffee. <clears throat> Kick butt coffee. Are you ready? Oh, thank goodness. My neighbor was using his sandblaster and it's pretty loud. Okay, I'm gonna have to give me another backdrop. Those lines are killing me. <clears throat> anyway, today we are on day 26. Oh, this is a good one. I could go on all day about this one, but I won't because we got fun things to do. Um, <clears throat> I know we probably won't have as many here today, but day 26 is probably worth going back to and reading and, and looking at and listening to every single day of your life. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but the book says, me saying, <laughs> don't allow perfectionism to beat you up if you miss a day. You're not behind. See, that's what we automatically think when we're giving ourselves gold stars and then we don't have a star up there. Because we missed a day. Don't do this to yourself. Because it's okay. We give you a grace period. We give you a grace period. And it's okay to miss a day. It's the act of beating ourselves up that I want you to put an end to. This is what flying is all about. Finally loving yourself. And when you let go of your perfectionism. And let's just say you missed a day. Well, the goal is, and, and I don't really believe in goals. I think goals are, are, are just a way to set us up for failure. I like to establish habits, string them into routines, and then those routines get you to where you want to go. I mean, I will never forget many, many years ago, in one of my other prototypes of a control journal, at the very back of my control journal, I wrote a list of things that I would like to do one day. Now this wasn't a bucket list of me personally. This was a bucket list for my fly babies, things I wanted to put together for them. And I forgot about it. I totally forgot about it. But the act of putting it down on a piece of paper and sticking it in the back of my control journal that was brilliant because a few years later, I opened up this, it was a, a little photo album and in the back of this photo album, I probably got it around here somewhere. I had written this list and it had make a children's CD. It had music for my fly babies, an adult CD. It had, um, Oh, it was just a list of about 10 or 11 things that eventually they all got done. <clears throat> I mean, every one of them were done because I wrote them down. Now, they weren't so much goals and I didn't set out to do them as goals, but I'm like a hound dog. When I get something, excuse me, when I get something on my mind, I run with it. I absolutely run with it. And that's <clears throat> kind of what happened with that list. But did I, 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 Robert calls it getting into project mode. <clears throat> so with, with the 31 baby steps, we're kind of in project mode. We have looked at the fly lady system a little bit every day. And we've been addressing these things doing something every day when Roger when when Robert 
is in project mode. When Robert is in project mode, his, his, um, I won't say go, but his purpose is just to do one thing. I mean, I remember he built me shelves in the basement one time. We had this whole blank wall and I needed more storage. We have a, a little tiny house on top of a mountain and he had built it when he was a bachelor and bachelors don't have lots of things. Um, but I didn't have storage for my kitchen stuff. The stuff I didn't use often. And so he set about, and he was a full-time judge working every day and having to drive sometimes an hour and 20 minutes to the courthouse in two different counties. He was in five counties. But every day when he got home and he changed his clothes, he had his, he had his afternoon routine. He would go down into the basement and do one thing on the project. Just one thing. Sometimes it was drill one hole. Sometimes it was draw. He started out drawing the project. He had sort of a a path that he he knew what to do. He purchased the wood. He started designing it, and then he started cutting the pieces, and then he started laying it all out. And eventually, after about a couple of months. He had a finished project. Now these shelves are so sturdy, you could lay on them. And he brought me downstairs and he said, check this out. And he crawled inside the shelves and, and <clears throat> in a reclined position. And he was, he said, they'll hold me. Well, he's a little fella. But it was a little bit every day that he did. Not from start to finish. And that kind of helped me set a pattern to help you do something every day toward making things a little bit better in your home. This is why we practice a new habit each month. This is why we string our routines together one habit at a time because that keeps us <clears throat> that keeps us from overwhelming ourselves. If you spend all day decluttering, when are you going to declutter again? You don't want to touch it. it makes it drives you. You're done. You just put a fork in it. You're over with. You don't want to touch it again. Baby steps. Thirty-one baby steps. Start thinking about baby steps all the time in everything you do because that's going to help you not get overwhelmed and throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just throw in the towel. This is going to help you help you do this. Now, if you are on um, Amazon unlimited reading for your Kindle or your Kindle app, this book is free. This book is free. Now, all of the videos are on our website under um, live, under the blog roll. I don't have something to show you. I should bring my uh, iPad in here to show you. But they're under the blog roll under Fly Lady Live. And they're also at the bottom of the of every page there is fly lady radio click fly lady radio and all the baby steps are there hey Jenny from Rosman you're my neighbor so check out our baby steps we have um, just a few more to go I'm I've surprised myself not missing a day I may have to miss a day just to prove to you it's okay to miss a day But be kind to yourself. When we beat ourselves up, and that's what I noticed when I first started uh, getting organized. I mean, I woke up like all of you on New Year's Day in 1999. I was scared to death. I was going to become a county commissioner in Transylvania County. And 
I didn't want the men on the board of commissioners to find out my dirty little secret. And my dirty little secret was I couldn't keep house. I didn't know how to keep house. And so I decided I wanted to get organized. Wow, isn't that broad? Get organized. I didn't even know where to start. So we have um, a saying in the South. Whatever you do on New Year's Day, you're going to do every day for the rest of the year. There it is, that perfectionism again. But in the South, we don't dare do laundry. And when we really need to do a load of laundry every day, we don't dare do dishes because uh, we don't want to do dishes every day. Well, we really need to do dishes every day. And so I got out. I had a... It wasn't a recipe box. Now, this was from Pam and Peggy. I had a... They teach you to put everything on note cards. Well, being obsessive compulsive about things, I figured the more note cards I had, the the uh, the more I it would organize me. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. There's a part of their book that I forgot to read, that I didn't read, that said every time one of the cards becomes a habit, <clears throat> you get to throw it away. Well... I didn't do that. I just kept collecting them. I just kept collecting them. And I didn't have a little three by five recipe box. I had a card file that was 18 inches long and it was oak and it was cute. And it was, it had 31 day dividers, ABC dividers, um, the months of the year dividers. And I had no cards everywhere. And then, so on that New Year's Day, I just set out to get organized. So I thought, well, this is the only system that has ever worked for me for any period of time. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll dig into that. So I took the cards. I had 500 cards. So I started sorting the cards per color. I, I had a pile for daily cards. I had a pile for weekly cards. I had a pile for things you do once a month. That's our zones. And I just started shuffling these cards and, you know, putting them in different piles. And I saw my pile of daily cards and it was over 50 cards that I do each day. And I said, I can't do this. I just... I'm, I'm not going to keep up with it. I'm going to, I'm going to miss, because uh, when you miss the card or you miss looking at your cards for a day, with me, with my obsessiveness, OCD, I just stuck the card file box underneath the kitchen, kitchen sink and didn't look at it. Well, out of sight, out of mind, bam. You know what happens next? <clears throat> so... I sorted all these cards and I thought, well, I'll make a list. I couldn't do a stack of 50 cards, but maybe I could do a list. And I made the list on a sheet of paper. Now, with the card file system, I didn't have any rhyme or reason to my cards. I didn't have a one card, two card, a three card, a four card. I, I just put them in the card file willy nilly. And if it didn't, if it said get dressed and it was three o'clock in the afternoon, that's the card I did. What I realized putting that list together that it needed some kind of chronological order to it. And then I started thinking about all, all this front and back of a sheet of paper. How could I do all of that? And I, I just said, I can't do this. And then I remembered something. I had never really established a habit with any of those cards. None of them. No habit whatsoever. The cards told me what to do. And I thought, well, if I established a habit, then it would be muscle memory in my brain. You know, your brain's not a muscle, but it's, it would be, it 
it would be almost automatic. So how do you establish a habit? You have to practice it every day. Well, I had to pick a habit to practice. So that's when I started with shining my sink. Now, the reason I picked shining my sink is my husband told me, we hadn't been married long, just a couple of years. He said, honey, if you'll just keep one side of the sink open so that I can get a glass of water or, or make coffee in the morning, I'll make you a cup of coffee. Well, guess what? He makes me a cup of coffee every day. And he puts it in one of my favorite cups. This is um, a picture of the Holy Mother untying knots. This is the untire of knots. It's a beautiful um, image. Pope Francis loves this painting. That's how I find out about it. No, I'm not Catholic, but I like the saints and I, I like I like pretty pictures and this one is a beautiful image of the Holy Mother untying knots let me see if I can get it up there she's untying knots and and we have to untie knots I love to untie knots it's a it's a let's just say it's one of my assets because I don't get frustrated with untying knots being a fisherman knots are just part of you know, learning to tie knots and all that. So I like to untie knots and get rid of um, lots of things that are wadded up together. It's it's just like a puzzle to me. I guess I'm weird that way. But, you know, getting back to establishing those habits, that's why I picked, you know, here I had these 30, these 50 cards and a sheet of piece of paper front and back that I was going to have to do every day. And I thought, I can't do that. I just started beating myself up. So I made two resolutions that New Year's Day to get organized and to be kind to me. We're our own worst enemy. We beat ourselves up over the most silly things, the silliest things, and we don't even know it. We're doing it. But those negative voices are in your head and you're saying terrible things to yourself and I want you to stop it and I want you to recognize it. I want you to recognize when you say ugly things to yourself because those ugly words are coming out of your mouth and they're infecting your children because you're saying the same thing to them. I want you to stop this and we can recognize when we do it if we will slow down a little. So I picked that one habit to practice because Robert said he'd make me coffee. I'll do just about anything for coffee. And he has kept his promise and I've kept mine. And we, keeping that sink clean and shiny is the beginning of anyone who starts with Fly Lady. That's your first habit that you practice the very first habit now for me it took me two hours to shine our sink that day but I wanted to be pretty as a new penny and the sink was 25 years old we have hard water I had to take a chisel to it to get the hard crusty water off of the uh, calcium deposits off the sink and by the time I finished Now, I did use a little bleach on the sink, and the reason I did is because it was stained. I mean, Robert lived here 25 years. I'd only been here two years, and so I I filled the sink full of hot water, and I poured about a cup of bleach in it, and I let it sit for a while, and and then I rinsed it really well because you don't want to mix bleach with anything else, and then I took... um, some comment at that. I didn't know about Barkeeper's Friend then. I took some comment and I shined that sink. I mean, I scoured that sink really well and then I rinsed it really well and I took a, a, a knife and went around the edges to get those calcium deposits off. I even took dental floss and went around the faucets 
by the time I finished that sink. It's history. It's beautiful. This old stainless steel sink had who was dull from calcium deposit from oh, all over the years was beautiful. It looked like a brand new penny. And I was so proud of it. And when you have a sink that clean and shiny, you don't dare put a dirty dish in it. And we had a dishwasher, but our sink was always full of dirty dishes because I didn't empty the dishwasher. Well, when you got a sink that clean and shiny, the dishwasher gets emptied because you need a dirty dish disposal unit. And when you have a place to put your dirty dishes, and if you don't have a dishwasher, clean out from under your sink. You know those vases and mayonnaise jars and all those cleaning products you got under there. Let's get those things out of there so you can put a dishpan under there. And when you put a dishpan under there, that's a place to put your dirty dishes. It's a dirty dish disposal pan. There you have it. That's how Fly Lady started. That's how my house got organized, was with that shiny sink. And every night before I went to bed, I made sure that sink was shiny. Now, I didn't have to do anything else. But because that sink was shiny, my countertops got cleared off. My stove got clean. And it was old. It was an old copper-toned stove. And... The floor was yellow, and but you couldn't tell it was yellow because it was, it it had had crusted in. Well, the dirt was in the grooves, you know. Eventually, eventually, the whole kitchen was beautiful, and when your kitchen is clean, you don't mind going in there and cooking. That's how it started. Missing a day didn't kill me with all that. I mean, because th figuring that I would practice this habit of keeping that sink clean and shiny, I didn't, and I'm being kind to me at the same time, so I'm, I'm keeping my sink clean and shiny and being kind to me. If I miss a day, I didn't beat myself up. I just jumped back in, shined my sink, and went on. And... The rest is history because when your kitchen is clean, it sets a tone for the rest of the home. So you're going to clean off your hot spots. But January, I, I only practice shining my sink. How beautiful is that? Shining my sink. And then the next month was decluttering every day. 15 minutes a day. Five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon, five minutes in the evening if you have to. If you can't do five, 15 minutes at one time, 15 minutes a day was all I did because I knew if I did too much that I wouldn't do it the next day. So I want to keep it small. And if you declutter too fast, this is what's bad about being OCD. If we declutter too fast, we'll get it all back in here. And I had two rules. As soon as I put a box together, it had to go straight to the car. And the next time I was out, I donated. And we're really blessed these days because Goodwill's got trailers everywhere. There, you've got a, a, lots of charities in, in your community. And they'll come, most of them will come and pick up if you've got big stuff. You can plan. Uh, they'll, they'll come and, and get it. I know my, my sister's um, boyfriend passed away a few, a month ago, uh, almost two months ago now. And she was going through his clothes and I said, call somebody to come and pick them up. I am vet. Somebody will come and pick them up. And she did. She went through his, all his clothes and, and got them out of the house. And it, it's, you know, it's good to do that. You don't need too much stuff in your home. Go through your clothes. When you get something new, get rid of something old. And if you're in the decluttering mode, get rid of two things. So the habits just kind of spread out. So with um, January was shining your sink. February was decluttering 15 minutes a day. 
March, this is, we still practice these today. March was getting dressed to lace up shoes. Yes, putting my shoes on every day. My shoes are on right now. They're on right now, laced up, tied on my feet so I can't kick them off. That's how it started. I didn't start with getting dressed to lace up shoes every day. I started with keeping my sink clean and shine. Now, I did get dressed to lace up shoes, but I didn't realize I was doing it. It wasn't something I set out to do. Shining my sink was what I set out to do. <clears throat> my Fly Lady app is popping up on my phone. Now, January, February, March, April. April is um, making your bed every day. Today, I made the bed for the cat. The minute I got the bed made, the cat jumped on it. He just needed an invitation. Uh, May is moving in May. We're doing that right now. Moving in May. And we posted a cute testimonial yesterday, or maybe it's tomorrow. I don't know. I stay two or three days ahead, so I don't know which day it's coming out. But this lady bought a hula hoop at the dollar store. A hula hoop. And she loved hula hooping for 15 minutes. And she worked up quite a sweat. Imagine that, getting all the kids hula hoops and everybody hula hooping. How fun could that be? Okay. June, our habit for June, which is coming up in a few days, is drinking your water. Most women are dehydrated. They, they don't get enough fluids through their system to, to empty out all the toxins. So drink your water. I have a little rule. I have these little holy metals in my bathroom. And I start the morning with two cups while I'm getting dressed in the morning. Two, and I keep a cup in the bathroom just for this purpose. It's a little pretty copper cup, and I love it. And I drink two cups while I'm in there. That, gets, that primes the pump, so you got to go to the bathroom. Uh, practice going to a different bathroom every time you have to go. That way you can switch and swipe in each bathroom. But that's, an, that's another habit. Um, these are things I've piggybacked on everything. So I drink a cup of water after I go potty and I say a prayer for somebody. And I move it over to the other side. So I keep count of the number of cups of water I've had to drink just in the bathroom. I also keep my water bottle right beside me in the living room so that I have water with me everywhere. If I leave the house, I take a water bottle with me. Now, we've got a great deal going on on water bottles. We're, we're getting rid of them because everybody's got water bottles now, and ours are the best. Main thing, you got you to gotta set up a little system for drinking water. You can put rubber bands or hair scrunchies on your water bottle and roll them up and down to keep count. You can get a pretty bottle or pitcher and put lines on it so that you can keep count of how many glasses you've had to drink. Fill up um, a jug in your, in your, if you like cold water, put it in your refrigerator. It, it's just about reminding yourself to drink water. So that's June. July's is swish and swipe your bathroom. August is laundry, doing a load a day. Then um, September is your before bed routine. It's practicing getting the kids ready to go to school, going to bed earlier, doing your before bed routine, setting up your launch pad. September, October it's paper clutter. Boy, do we have paper clutter. I got an essay coming out on Monday, I think it is, about how to how to remodel your house, getting rid of the paper clutter. Um, then November is menu planning. And then December is pampering yourself, doing something every day just for you. Now, that's the habits that we practice every month. But we're right now, we're putting together a simplified control journal. Let me grab this. This is just a four by six photo album. Let me pull up one of them. 
morning routine on a note card. Really, it's just a, a colored piece of paper. I see it. Do you see everything that's on it? Get up, make the bed, swish and swat. Get dressed, take a shower. Uh, it's Right there it says for me to get on the treadmill and write amusing. Well, I don't do that. Uh, put in a load of laundry, empty the dishwasher, make coffee. My husband made my coffee. Um, fill up my water bottles, eat breakfast, and take my vitamins. Bam. That's my morning routine. It's all done. Done, done, done. Still drinking my coffee. And I haven't written amusing. But I got stuff to do today. It's a holiday weekend, and I am planning on cooking and having some fun myself. So, I've gone 30 minutes on this. I can't believe it. Just don't beat yourself up today. If you spill milk, get it up. If you make a mess, clean it up. If you get something out, put it away. Just don't beat yourself up. Y'all, let's have some fun today. Let's get our routines done and get out there and have some fun. We have a big festival. If y'all hadn't found the video I posted yesterday of my little personal white squirrel festival, uh, go look it up. I had two white squirrels on my back porch and I did a little video of them. I couldn't open the door because they'd run away. But let's do this. I got coffee. Go have fun. And let's take these baby steps to get our homes organized. I love you all. I will see you tomorrow. And enjoy your day. Get dressed in lace-up shoes. I'll get this posted in a minute.